modern stained glass window. But what really makes this stained glass window so modern? Is it the design? The materials used? Its energy efficiency? These are some of the topics that we will cover in this video. Enjoy! What would be a more modern way of creating the design than to do it on the computer? So we printed out on a few 11 by 17s for our pattern and we are ready to start pulling our glass. This white streaky glass was selected by the prestigious San Antonio based interior design firm Bradshaw Designs. I'll leave a link to their website in the description so you can check out some of the fantastic work they do. They also came up with the overall design which was based on the window located at the Landa Library in San Antonio, Texas. I remember when the Bradshaw design team came into the shop, they scanned all the hundreds of colors in our palette, deduced down to about 10 to 15 samples to bring to the client, and ultimately settled on this glass. It was truly nothing short of a fantastic choice. We're going to get started chopping down these big sheets into workable sizes. These 48 inch straight edges are the real MVPs of this step. Now this design does have exactly symmetrical sections. So what you will see throughout the cutting process is that I'll be cutting on the same portion for multiple pieces. That's also why you'll see me reaching across filling up other parts of the pattern. This particular glass is an Oceanside glass. In case you are unfamiliar, Oceanside is the company that acquired Spectrum and their line of glass products. Their glass, I would say, is the easiest to cut on for beginners because the smooth side of the glass is extremely smooth and usually with little to no imperfections or divots. So your glass cutter will glide smoothly like a hot knife through butter, people. This particular glass is a bit of a dense glass and although the lines look to be easily visible through the glass, it's only because we have a light table directly underneath it vividly illuminating the pattern. Who knew that light would be so handy to cut glass? I have had some funny experiences talking to beginners that never realized glass wasn't actually cut with a knife or scissors. It's one of those things that has become so normal for me, I'll bust out laughing when I hear someone that has a different or maybe more of a bit of a naive idea like that. If you'd like an in-depth guide on cutting glass, check the description for a link to one I made. Cutting the circles is probably the hardest part of the glass cutting step. It's important to get them just right, even if you need to take a few trips to the grinder to get those edges just right. Reason being is that the circles need to have a perfect edge for the lead to take shape against, or else it will look lopsided and end up a big mess later on. Although they are the most work, I would say the circles are probably my favorite part. When chewing the glass away with the grosiers, little dimples and jagged edges in the glass will be left behind. That's when you know, it's grinding time. Grinding the glass does take a little extra time, but at the end of the day, our main priority is doing extremely high quality work that we are proud of and that the customer will be thrilled to have. These windows are certainly not inexpensive and the customer deserves nothing short of a top tier product that's worth the price. Hey, I hope you are enjoying this video, and if you want to see more like it, consider subscribing. We have many awesome projects coming very soon. A little hint, one project is for a vineyard. That one is for all you wine lovers. And if there's a particular subject you'd be interested in seeing, leave me a comment of what type of stained glass window you think we should build next. We just might. Now that we have all our pieces cut, we can place them on the pattern in the correct spots and we are now completely done with the cutting. As long as I don't break any pieces when letting the panel. <laughs> you know how that is. Now I'll waddle on over to grab some lead. For this project, the typical quarter inch H round in the area and the half inch H flat on the perimeter. Of course, a quick stretch and the strips of lead are ready for action.
we'll shove our glass over to the side, nail some forms, and get started with the lead assembly. We'll start with the perimeter using the half inch H lead. I normally prefer to pre-lead all of the circles, so when we get to that point of the assembly, they are ready to go. It's a bit of a trial and error, these circles. Wrap, cut, hammer it down, cut a little more, hammer again, and really just keep repeating until the lead is wrapped tightly enough for the ends not to be smushed together at the meeting point, but also for the ends not to have a huge gap between them either. You want the pieces of lead to be nice and tight, but no irregularity in the curve of the lead. That's why we made sure these circles were perfect when we cut them. We'll normally start in the corner closest to us and move right along. This little piece of wood in the mallet can be your best friend when working on these panels because that's really the best way I found to persuade the glass and tighten up all the joints to keep this panel looking perfectly. As you build the window, secure it with nails and a scrap lead. The lead assembly is my favorite part of this process because you start to see the panel coming to life. This is the first time you are seeing the glass holding together with the lead lines instead of loosely on the pattern. This glass does have a slight direction in its color and texture, so it's important to orient all the pieces the same way. Since the pieces can only fit in one orientation, this is mostly addressed during the cutting phase, but the circles can be turned any direction, so that is the trickiest part that you have to be 100% certain to get right. With the lead assembly complete, it is solder time. This is a pretty satisfying part of the project because now the panel is actually holding together, even after only the first side is soldered. After we finish wire brushing all the joints, we will apply our flux and we are using 5050 solder and a Weller soldering iron. I'll link down in the description to our online store where all of the products used to create the modern stained glass window in this video are available to be purchased. While finishing up the soldering, I want to also shout out Maose Construction Corporation, the general contractor on this project. They were great to work with and certainly a great option in the San Antonio builders market. I'll link to their contact in the description as well. It's important to solder up all the joints neatly and to take your time. Really make sure this piece is something you're proud of, even down to the finest details. At this point, the iron is getting really hot, so I'm doing light taps to ensure I don't melt the lead. These complex solder joints where you have many lead lines all coming together can get very messy very quickly. Solder has a tendency to stick to all the surfaces that have been cleaned up by the flux. So if you don't put a barrier of some sort over the lead, it will just keep running and sticking to the lead. That's where this tape comes in. It takes a little bit longer, but it really makes a big difference to keep this a high quality project where the little details really matter. After finishing the first side, we'll simply flip it over and repeat. Now, if you have seen any of our other videos, you'll notice we are doing something a little different this time. Normally when fabricating a stained glass window, this is the stage where one would begin applying stained glass putty, but we actually won't be applying stained glass putty to this panel, and there's a good reason why. As time has gone on, a modern building technique is to incorporate double pane windows into newly built homes and window systems. This stained glass window will actually be insulated within a double pane window so that the energy efficiency benefits of the double pane windows can be blended with the beauty of the stained glass windows. So since we are not applying stained glass putty to darken up the lead, we are applying a black patina to the lead to get this nice finished look. It's important to clean up the lead nicely with some steel wool or a wire brush to make sure the lead takes the patina evenly. Here is the finished product prior to insulation. All the lead has been patinaed and has received a nice buffing and cleaning. Ready for insulation. Here is the insulated window. Essentially, it is an Oreo cookie where the chocolate cookie parts are the safety tempered clear glass and the frosting in the middle is the decorative leaded panel. So far, I think this project is coming out really awesome. If you agree, leave me a thumbs up. Install day. We'll load up the panel into the van safely on the A-frame. This Windows system incorporates snap-in stops. With a bit of prying, we're able to get these off and remove the existing double pane window. 
It's important to remove every last bit of the existing sealant and to pump a generous amount of silicone sealant to ensure that this window will never leak. After a final wipe down, this project is all finished up. I am really happy how it came out. That's what I call a modern stained glass window. Thanks for watching.